Good afternoon. First off, thank you to all my viewers and subscribers. I appreciate you. If you have not already, please subscribe. In upcoming weeks, I'll continue to present related content. I'll be working to create another New Madrid earthquake video. As you know, I've already made several videos on the New Madrid earthquake of 1811-1812 and the comet of the same time. I won't recap those videos here, but if you haven't seen them, I hope you might watch them. Today's topic I'll be discussing is the Caracas-Venezuela earthquake of 1812. This is not to be confused with the Caracas earthquake of 1967. And this past week or so, while I was reading about the earthquake, I ended up spending more time learning about the history of Venezuela. I was seeking information that might point to the Caracas earthquake being caused by unnatural events, say warfare. Before I discuss the Caracas earthquake of 1812, I'm going to cover a brief history of Venezuela. If you're like me, I had no clue what was going on in Venezuela in the early 19th century. In the least, it will save you the trouble searching YouTube for Venezuelan history. I will do my very best to make the history short and simple. You are probably familiar with the history about Napoleon unleashing his reign of destruction all across Europe during the early 19th century. In my 1811 comet videos, I question the cause of this destruction as being an unnatural event, but I won't digress. And our calendar was altered at some time during this period too. Around 1809 and again maybe 1812, Napoleon's destruction comes immediately after the French Revolution, seeking to expand the French Empire and conquering Europe. The French Revolution was a period of great upheaval in France from 1789 until 1799. The revolution overthrew monarchies and established republics. Rather, French revolutionaries overthrew kings and queens and set up sovereign governments. The French Revolution promoted liberal and radical ideas. The effects of the French Revolution were felt as far away as the European colonies in the Americas. If you didn't know, present-day Venezuela was colonial territory of the Kingdom of Spain, more specifically King Ferdinand VII of Spain. The story is a bit more complicated. In short, the traditional kingdoms were usurped by Republicans. Thus we have the Cadiz Cortes in 1810 in Spain set up as a National Assembly. I'd like to read the following Wikipedia article. The Cadiz Cortes was the first National Assembly to claim sovereignty in Spain. It represented the abolition of the old kingdoms. The opening session was held on the 24th of September 1810 in the building now known as the Real Teatro de las Cortes. It met as one body and its members represented the entire Spanish Empire. The sessions of the national legislative body, traditionally known in Spain as the Cortes, met in the safe haven of Cadiz during the French occupation of Spain during the Napoleonic Wars. The Cadiz Cortes were seen then, and by historians today, as a major step towards liberalism and democracy in the history of Spain. The liberal Cortes passed the Spanish Constitution of 1812, which established a constitutional monarchy and eliminated many basic institutions that privileged some groups over others. The details of history can get complicated, so, in short, Napoleon and his consul get involved in Spain during the Peninsular Wars of 1807-1814. to and somewhere in between, this leads to the Spanish Constitution of 1812, which reforms Spain according to enlightened ideals. Napoleon even appoints his brother, Giuseppe Buenoparte, as the King of Spain for a time. More can be said, but this French revolutionary activity in Spain causes even Spain's colonies to be affected. Generally, I think it's fair to say the wars for independence in Venezuela was fought for similarly enlightened ideas. Generally, in Venezuela, as in Europe, Venezuela was divided between those supportive of the King of Spain and the Republicans associated with Napoleon. I should correct my last statement. Venezuela wasn't fully recognized as an independent state until 1830, or even 1845. The history is confusing. In 1819, Venezuela became part of Greater Gran Colombia. Venezuela was more of a province and composed more of townships or city-states, like Cumana, Coro, Caracas, La Guaira. The story I am really trying to arrive at is how provincial Venezuela was fighting a war of independence between 1810 and 1812. It gained full independence as a separate country in 1830. I'll spoil the ending, but supporters of the monarchy, rather King Ferdinand VII of Spain, eventually lose to the Republicans. At least that's what we are told. It appears that Venezuela is merely following the same business model or business plan of setting up a republic. 
It's no surprise that many of Venezuelan Republicans, like Francisco de Miranda, borrowed their political ideas from the Jacobin Club. Relying on the Wikipedia article about the First Republic of Venezuela, it says, Miranda was elected to the Congress and began agitating for independence, gathered around him a group of similarly minded individuals who formed an association modeled on the Jacobin Club to pressure the Congress. Independence was formally declared on the 5th of July, 1811. And if you're interested to know the cast of characters surrounding the revolution in Venezuela, the following website provides a good rundown. I don't go looking for the Masonic connection, it just came up while I was reading into this subject. So why did I go on so long about Venezuelan history? The reason, amongst all the revolutionary turmoil, an earthquake happened. And an odd detail of the story is that it destroyed the First Republic of Venezuela. Wikipedia says in the article entitled, Venezuelan War of Independence, the First Republic of Venezuela was lost in 1812 following the 1812 Caracas earthquake and the Battle of La Victoria, 1812. Caracas is important because this is where a junta, or rather a Republican government faction, is set up. This faction was rejected by neighboring towns. I'll just read the Wikipedia article on the Venezuelan War of Independence. It says, Even before the Congress began its sessions in November 1810, a civil war started between those who supported the Caracas Juntas and eventually independence and royalists who wanted to maintain the union with Spain. Two provinces, Maracaibo Province and Guayana Province, and one district, Coro, never recognized the Caracas Junta and remained loyal to the governments in Spain. Military expeditions to bring Coro and Guayana under the control of the Republic failed. In 1811, an uprising in Valencia, Valencia, Venezuela that is, against the Republic was successfully suppressed. By 1812, the situation increasingly became aggravated for the young Republic. It was short of funds. Spanish Regency set up a blockade, although it was easily bypassed by British and American merchant ships. And on the 26th of March, 1812, a devastating earthquake hit Republican areas. In these desperate moments, Miranda, a Republican, was given dictatorial powers. Nevertheless, he was unable to stem the Royalist advance headed by Captain Domingo de Monteverde. By mid-year, after the Battle of San Mateo, the Republic collapsed. Miranda capitulated to Monteverde and signed an armistice on the 25th of July, 1812. The struggle between the Republicans and Royalists did not end here, not until the Battle of Carabobo in 1821 and the Battle of Lake Maracaibo in 1823 did the Republicans, guys like Simón Bolívar, gain control, and Venezuela did not become fully independent until 1830. Okay, now moving on to the earthquake. You see, this past week I came across this book, Personal Narrative of Travels to the Equinoctial Regions of the New Continent During the Years 1799 to 1804. And actually, reading the book, Humboldt must have revised this work, because he covers the events well into 1813. Should you desire an explanation of this, see page 2 of his book. This book gives a pretty good account of the earthquake. Although, in my opinion, Humboldt uses strange language relating the earthquake to sounds of artillery. However, these are fragile clues that this was more than just an earthquake. After all, I have to admit, loud explosions are not out of the ordinary during earthquakes. But unfortunately, before I discuss this book, I'll have to give you another brief history lesson. So bear with me. I'm going to give you the story of the author that wrote this book. In fact, he had a partner with him that helped contribute to this book. Humboldt's partner was Aimé Bonpland. An interesting mention is that there is a Masonic Lodge in Mexico named after Alexander von Humboldt. So who was Alexander von Humboldt? Friedrich Wilhelm Heinrich Alexander von Humboldt was a Prussian from Berlin who was an expert on many scientific subjects. He is known for his exploration of Latin America. He is noted as a pioneer in the field of biogeography and related sciences. Between 1799 and 1804, Humboldt traveled and explored wide ranges in Latin America. He remarked a lot on the geology of the landscapes. This Wikipedia article on Humboldt 
is quite large. In his field of biogeography, Humboldt was a pretty big deal. Sparing you the details, in Madrid, Spain, Madrid, Spain, Humboldt sought authorization to travel to Spain's realms in the Americas. He was aided in obtaining it by the German representative of Saxony at the Royal Bourbon Court. Humboldt goes with his buddy, Bon Plond, Aimé Bon Plond, 1773-1858, who is a French explorer and botanist who traveled with Alexander von Humboldt in Latin America from 1799 to 1804, co-authored volumes of the scientific results of their expedition. Uh, just to mention, Bon Plond is from La Rochelle, La Rochelle, France. Armed with authorization from the King of Spain, Humboldt and Bon Plond made haste to sail, taking their ship Pizarro from a Coruña on the 5th of June 1799. The ship stopped six days on the island of Tenerife, where Humboldt climbed the volcano Teide, and then sailed onto the New World, landing at Cumana, Venezuela on the 16th of July. Okay, so I'm just going off notes that I made from Humboldt's book. I guess I should start by saying the earthquake happened on March 26th, 1812 at about 4.07 in the afternoon. Okay, on page 5 we learn that Humboldt and whatever crew he was with, including Bon Plond, landed at Cumana on December 14th, 1797, and in the writing Humboldt starts making a connection between the eruption of a volcano in the smaller West India Islands. So right away Humboldt is drawing a connection between some volcanic eruptions of the West India Islands with the Caracas earthquake. He's reminiscing a little bit about the Orinoco River leaving Caracas. And on the first page, Humboldt is lamenting over the loss of his friends who died in the earthquake since he had last visited Venezuela. If we pay attention to the title of the book, Humboldt was in Venezuela from 1799, I think is what it says, to 1804. So Humboldt really isn't giving a first-hand account of the Caracas earthquake because he wasn't there. He claims that he was able to find and be provided with eyewitness accounts, although that's not entirely clear. But Humboldt has enough information to speak on the earthquakes. I'm also going to mention, this is unrelated to the Humboldt book, but I looked at the newspaper that was coming out of Caracas at the time of 1812 and around there, and it was actually a strange story because it was two British guys from Trinidad who were operating a newspaper in Caracas. That's a strange story in itself. That's not mentioned in the Humboldt book. I think I found that on Wikipedia. Okay, but once again, page B, or the very first page, Humboldt is lamenting over friends he had lost that he originally remembered from his first time he traveled to Venezuela. He doesn't explicitly say who his friends are. So is he speaking about the first Venezuelan Republic type of people? Because that's a little bit before that was set up. No matter, he's saying that now everything in Venezuela is in ruins, and the, the surface of the soil has changed. Of course, I'm wondering whether this means sand fissures or mud flooding. The Wikipedia article, having looked this up, mentions dirty water. Is that mud flooding? I don't know. Generally, the first page, Humboldt is saying that the whole city of Caracas has disappeared, but people are now rebuilding on the ruins. Page 2, he's kind of saying that the revolutions are not correctly recorded in history, although his writing is a little bit confusing, and I've reminded myself to read in a quote here. Page 2, these are described with the least accuracy. So he's talking about the revolutions that happened in Caracas. These are described with the least accuracy when they happen to coincide with period of civil dissensions. Earthquakes and the eruptions of volcanoes strike the imagination by the evils which are the necessary consequence and bottom of page two explains how Humboldt has reliable information from friends about the Caracas earthquake. I have thought proper to record in this work all I have been able to collect with certainty respecting the earthquakes of the 26th of March 1812, which destroyed the town of Caracas and by which more than 20,000 persons perished almost at the same instant in the province of Venezuela. At the top of page four, Humboldt begins discussing the connectedness of volcanic eruptions in the area, and he speaks of a previous volcano at Cotopahi in Quito, Ecuador, and its influence over other volcanoes in South America. So he's relying that he's relying on this historical information as a basis to compare volcanic activity. He spends a great deal of time discussing this. Now in his book, in Humboldt's book, we learn that Humboldt first arrives in Venezuela in 1799 at Cumana, and he mentions that this place has connection with earthquaking. 
I'll just read the quote. At my arrival in terra firma, I was struck with the connection of two physical events, the destruction of Cumana on the 14th of December, 1797, and the eruption of the volcanoes in the smaller West India Islands. This connection has been again manifested in the destruction of Caracas on the 26th of March, 1812. The volcano of Guadalupe seemed to have reacted in 1797 on the coasts of Cumana. Fifteen years after, it was a volcano situate nearer the continent, that of St. Vincent's, which appeared to have extended its influence as far as Caracas on the banks of the Apure. Humboldt is basically saying that the region is one with a lot of volcanoes and that earthquakes are connected. He says somewhere in the book, I forget which page, but the Gulf of Mexico is like one big basin, so I suppose reverberations of earthquakes can travel. There's an interesting quote on the top of page 6. From the beginning of 1811 till 1813, a vast extent of the earth, limited by the meridian of the Azores, the valley of the Ohio, the cordilleras of New Grenada, the coasts of Venezuela, and the volcanoes of the smaller West India Islands, has been shaken almost at the same time by commotions which may be attributed to subterraneous fires. He's basically remarking on how many wide-ranging natural disasters are occurring in this area in this time period. On page 8, Humboldt touches upon the New Madrid earthquakes in the Missouri area in 1811. On page 10, Humboldt talks about the Lisbon earthquake of 1755. I should almost give quotes from page 12 and 13, but to sum it up, Humboldt describes the shocks that happened on March 26, 1812 at 4.07 in the afternoon, and that the shocks were felt and church bells rang. He also says nine or ten thousand people in Caracas were killed, particularly in churches where they were crushed. On page 14, we learn that nine-tenths of Caracas is destroyed, and the effects are less in the raven of Cavaguata, or Caraguata, and there a cathedral remains standing. So I want to remember to look up a picture, see if we can find that. Page 15, there's a quote which I wanted to read. That thick cloud of dust which, rising above the ruins, darkened the sky like a fog, had settled on the ground. This caught my attention, as the New Madrid earthquakes caused a sulfurous vapor to appear. On page 16, we learned fatal effects of the quake were felt as far away as Varinas and Maracaibo. Sorry, that was page 18, not 16. Page 18 also mentions the names of the cities that were affected. La Guaira, Maiquechia, Antimano, Baruta, La Vega, San Felipe, and Merida were almost entirely destroyed. And there's some interesting comments about a line running east-northeast and west-southwest. Just a quote, it was felt in the kingdom of New Grenada from the branches of the High Sierra de Santa Martha, as far as Santa Fe de Bogota and Honda on the banks of the Magdalena, 180 leagues from Caracas. On page 21, I wanted to read this quote, 15 or 18 hours after the great catastrophe, that's on the 26th of March, that's the Caracas earthquake, so 15 or 18 hours after the great catastrophe, the ground remained tranquil. The night, as we have already observed, was fine and calm, and the commotions did not recommence till after the 27th. They were then attended with a very loud and long-continued subterranean noise, bromido. On page 22, there's actually a quote in Humboldt's writing, so I'm reading a quote of a quote. It has been affirmed in many descriptions published of the destruction of Caracas that the mountain of the Sia is an extinguished volcano, that a great quantity of volcanic substances are found on the road from La Guaira to Caracas, that the rocks do not present any regular stratification, because I guess Caracas is a rocky area, and that everything bears the stamp of the action of fire. It is even added that twelve years before the great catastrophe, Mr. Bonpland and myself, from our physical and mineralogical researches, had considered the Sia as a very dangerous neighbor to the city, it's a big mountain, because that mountain contained a great quantity of sulfur and that the commotions must come from the northeast. Is that Humboldt saying, I told you so? 
and if there was any clues in Humboldt's work that these earthquakes were something other than a natural catastrophe, it comes between pages 26 and 28, where Humboldt uses some strange language and compares the earthquakes to artillery and musketry. So there's a quote on page 26. Actually, correction, it goes as far back as page 25, and I will read a quote halfway down the page, a little more it says, While violent commotions were felt at the same time in the valley of the Mississippi, in the island of St. Vincent, and in the provinces of Venezuela, the inhabitants of Caracas, of Calabozo, situate in the midst of the steppes, and on the borders of the Rio Apura, in a space of 4,000 square leagues, were terrified on the 30th of April, 1812, by a subterraneous noise which resembled frequent discharges of the largest cannon. The noise began at two in the morning. It was accompanied by no shock, which is very remarkable. It was as loud on the coast as at 80 leagues distance inland. Continuing talking about this noise, which happened in April, which is actually a month after the Caracas earthquake. I'll just read at the top of page 26. It was everywhere believed, this is the noise in April, it was everywhere believed to be transmitted through the air, and was so far from being thought a subterraneous noise that at Caracas as well as at Calabozo, preparations were made to put the place into a state of defense against an enemy who seemed to be advancing with heavy artillery. Mr. Palacio, crossing the Rio Apura below the Oravante, near the junction of the Rio Rio Nula was told by the inhabitants that the firing of cannon had been heard as distinctly at the western extremity of the province of Varinas as at the port of La Guaira to the north of the chain of the coast. On page 27, in my notes I've reminded myself to read a quote beginning at the top of the page. On the 30th, the lava passed the brink of the crater. This is actually talking about the volcano of St. Vincent. On the 30th, the lava passed the brink of the crater and after a course of four hours reached the sea. The noise of the explosion resembled that of alternate discharges of very large cannon and of musketry. And, which is well worthy of remark, it seemed much louder at sea, at a great distance from the island, than in sight of land, and near the burning volcano. There's a quote on page 28, which I would like to read, although I have to give some explanation first. Humboldt is comparing the Caracas earthquake to an earthquake that happened in Ecuador back in 1744. And if I'm reading it correctly, this volcano was called Cotopahi. So I'll just read the sentence. The little town of Honda on the banks of the Magdalena is not less than 145 leagues from Cotopahi, and yet in the great explosions of this volcano in 1744, a subterraneous noise was heard at Honda and supposed to be discharges of heavy artillery. The monks of St. Francis spread the news that the town of Carthagena was besieged and bombarded by the English, and the intelligence was believed throughout the country. Well, that concludes the quotes that I wanted to read and cover from the Humboldt book. And unfortunately, now I'm going off script as I didn't prepare notes. So I'm